I feel like exposed but yeah I only really had it in me to do about 20 minutes I haven't really been feeling like myself the last few days I think a lot of it just has to do with like my mental health just kind of going back down my mental health is 100% a roller coaster there are periods of my life where I feel great my anxiety is maintainable I'm very easy to like talk off the cliff and then there are times where literally getting out of bed is just like do i have to <laughs> do i does this person does this whatever really matter you know and i kind of feel like i'm getting back to that point and that point always scares me a little bit but i'm trying to remind myself that every time we go there we we come back and it's not it's not the ending place so to speak but i find that for me like exercise talking it out resting self-care those things help me a lot more than journaling so i don't know it's neither here nor there there definitely are times when journaling it out helps me to feel better but for the most part there are other things that are a lot more effective than journaling for me so <laughs> but yeah just i don't know it's always really hard a lot of my anxiety does stem from work lately i've been having a really hard time coming to terms with whether I want to quit my job or stay at my job. You know, things in my job have been really, I guess, tense and a little uncomfortable. And <laughs> I hate job searching. I think I hate job searching more than I do staying in my current position. Because I know once I've made a decision that will also make me feel better, I think the indecision of the decision is also what's bothering me. And I think it's just something I'm gonna have to just work through in my own time and for the most part just just remind myself that it's okay we're gonna get through this it it's not the end it's just an unfortunate destination on the journey but i'm gonna go make dinner we are doing mexican chicken bowls tonight i'm very excited because it's like the universe came together for this the avocado is perfectly ripe I seasoned the chicken this morning, I didn't forget. I picked up the roasted corn from Trader Joe's, which is my favorite. And yeah, I'm just excited. I'm just very excited to eat because I love to eat. I mean, what about me? Says she doesn't like to eat nothing. But yeah, I'm gonna go make dinner because I feel like this was a little long-winded. We have moved to the bedroom. I feel like I wasn't as productive tonight just because the night got off to a bit of a late start. So I feel like I lost a little bit of time there. For the most part, this routine has been working for me really, really well. I find that after the structure of my nine to five coming home and then having some more structure really helps me just make sure that I'm staying on track. Vicky, hold on, my cat, where was I? But I just find that having a little bit more routine after coming home from my nine to five, which is fairly structured, I do a lot of the same things day in and day out. So coming home and having a little bit more of a routine and a little bit more of structure really helps me to stay on track, as well as know where all of my like projects and content stands, as well as making sure that I'm not, to the best of my ability, <laughs> not forgetting to do things. So I'm thinking back to the end of December when I originally like 
tried to create this evening routine, I didn't really know if it would stick, especially the, the exercising part because I have tried so many times to exercise. I start, you know, trying to make it a habit and then something happens and I fall off track. And even though I got sick in early February and I did fall off track, I definitely got right back on track. I'm not working out four days a week. I'm averaging two to three days a week, but two to three days a week is better than zero days a week, which is what I was doing last year. Like I said in that video, I was like, if you don't see a follow-up, then I failed because I didn't really think that I could do it, that I could create this routine and I could stick to it. And then I did. I surprised even myself. And not only that, this routine has been so simple to stick to. It's just kind of wild to me that I really just took the time to think about my goals, my priorities, my schedule, my responsibilities, and then came up with this like system that actually worked. Isn't that so wild? I feel like for years I just struggled trying to do anything. And then all of a sudden I just applied some critical thinking and here we are. <laughs> this is a pretty solid evening routine. I've I've been doing this routine for about two months now and it's sticking. I don't foresee it going anywhere, which makes me feel thumbs up. It makes me feel like I can actually hold myself accountable and do the things that not only I say I want to do, but the things that I say I'm going to do. It just feels really, really nice. But before I close out the vlog, I did want to talk a little bit about my readings. If that's not something that interests you, then as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. But if that is something that interests you, then stick around for a few more minutes. So I just wanted to take a second to talk about some of the artwork in the Everqueen because I recently started it. I <laughs> have been putting it off because to be honest, I am not ready for it to end. I really love Eric and Livia and I'm just not ready to say goodbye. So I've been putting it off, but the time has come. We just have to read it. I keep thinking about it. We can't put it off any longer. But can we talk about the art, specifically of Eric, because because Miss LJ Andrews, how dare you? I was not ready for that. Even Livia is gorgeous. Uh, mm, mm. Um, but artwork aside, I'm getting kind of tired of series, specifically sequels in series, having the main couple separate. I'm really hoping that Eric and Livia find their way back together before the halfway point of the book, because if I have to go this whole book without them being together, I'm gonna lose my mind. And speaking of, I recently DNF'd Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross, and I don't wanna get too into it because it will be in my February read recap. The whole book, the whole book, from what I read, of reviews of other readers for Ruthless Vows was that Iris and Roman aren't even together until like the last 10% of the book. And not only that, it's a duology and the ending sucked. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna make up an imaginary scenario for the ending of Divine Rivals and live my life denial to Lulu land because I can't take this. I'm so tired of sequels that suck. Stop giving me this fantastic first book and then writing a sequel where you tear my favorite couple apart and make me read about other characters <laughs> that I just don't care about. I'm sorry. I'm just so, I'm so tired of it. I'm really liking the Everqueen so far. I am about 10% into it. So like I said, I'm really hoping that Eric and Livia make their way back to each other by the halfway point of the book. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna just lose it. I do have very high hopes for this book. The first book was fantastic, if not semi-traumatizing with that end, <laughs> but it was very good. It was definitely one of my five-star reads of 2023, and I'm hoping that The Ever Queen is one of my five-star reads of 2024. Also, this is a trilogy, so even though the first two books are about Eric and Livia, the third book is about Jonas. Which one of you is out there asking for a book about Jonas? I need to know. And I'm not asking for a friend, I'm asking for me. <laughs> because I'm confused. What did I miss about Jonas that he's getting a whole third book to himself? I'm excited nonetheless, but I'm very curious. But yeah, I have high hopes. I'm liking it so far. A little cautious, <laughs> I'm feeling a little nervous because I've been reading a lot of bad sequels lately. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But just a little update because I just had to share that artwork of Eric and Livia with you because I, that caught me by surprise in the best way possible. And I'm telling you, like I said in my review of the Evercane, I'm not a pirate girly. It's not my thing. I don't know. Eric could change my mind. Also, if you read the Evercane, 
And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm a little confused by the map. The Ever Kingdom is underwater, or is the Chasm just a very wide, like, river where the Chasm part of it is, you know, like, torturous to cross, and the Ever Kingdom actually is on land? I saw the map in the Ever Queen, and I just had to scratch my head because I was like, am I stupid? I might be stupid. With that being said, I will leave it there because a lot of my rambling can be saved for my February reading recap. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a little update. So that is the little update. I am going to go read and then go to sleep because I have to go to work tomorrow. Again, it is absurd that I have to go five days a week. I think that is way too many days in a week to have to spend at work. Anyway, thank you as always for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.